Hi, I'm Everett and welcome back to the shop. Uh, this time what I've got is another job I've brought home from work. Uh, it's an exhaust manifold for a Ford pickup that needs to be machined flat again. It's somewhat warped, not as bad as some of the ones I've seen, but it's still bad enough that uh, we need to fix it so we don't break any more exhaust studs off. Um, the, uh, I'll bring you into that one later. But before we do that, um, I did get an envelope in the mail just a few days ago, and uh, it came from Australia. He sent a number of stickers. Thanks, man. I, I like it when I get a batch of stickers because I have some friends I share with. Uh, my friend Grant, my buddy Eldon. And so, yeah, he's a high school teacher down in, uh, down in Australia, South, yeah, Victoria. The Victoria province in Australia. And... Uh, I don't know, I've recently become acquainted with his channel and started seeing some of the stuff he does and honestly he's got a bit of a spot that's dear to my heart because I was a high school shop teacher for a few years, but he is. Um, we didn't get into the, some of the stuff that he does, but uh, man it would have been fun to do some of the stuff he does with my students. But anyway, uh, yeah, he's also got, he also sent a few more, uh, DCT, Design Creativity uh, Technology Teacher, DCT Channel. So, these will definitely be going up on the board. Thanks, man. He also sent a few stickers for uh, MakeJoe.com. Uh, I wound up looking this one up and, because I've never used it. I've sort of heard about it before, but I've never used it. And I guess it's, uh, it looks like a site where, you know, basically people share uh, prints and ideas and stuff for 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC machines, that sort of stuff. Sort of a, a community group for that sort of thing. I haven't progressed to anything CNC. I don't even have DRO on my machines, so I haven't really gotten into that yet. Maybe down the road, if a 3D printer or a CNC machine get, you know, enters my universe here, then maybe I'll get into more of that. But anyway, um, thanks again, Aaron. I appreciate the stickers, and thanks for the fun letter, too. That was, it's, really, it's really cool when you get a letter from half... Well, I would say halfway across the world, but it's... a probably a little bit less actually just just a smidge less than halfway across the world from here but uh, you can't get much further otherwise I just wanted to uh, uh, say thanks Aaron and um, anyway as for the project what it is is it's a 2004 F450 uh, work truck and it's got the V10 engine in it right hand exhaust manifold was popping away like crazy the gasket was blown out and Sadly, it looks like some previous, I use the word technician in quotation marks, um, quote-unquote, repaired the hole by leaving the rest, or tried to drill it out, failed, gave up, put, put a Healy coil in for about four threads worth, and didn't even break the tang off the back. And, yeah, so no wonder that bolt disappeared. They probably didn't even tighten it down properly. So, anyway, um, or that stud, rather. So that's what we're up to, is we're going to fix the manifold. I probably won't get a lot of video at work taking that stud out. Uh, partly due to the fact that I am on the clock, and uh, you know when I'm there, I'm, we're actually billing customer time, and I'm sure customers don't want to be billing, bill, billed extra for me you know, taking video. So it's just trying to be fair to the customer. Um, and depending on how frustrating it is, it may require more editing than I want to do. So as far as the, uh, as far as that's concerned, I'll uh, take some pictures at the end and try to bring you, you know, bring everything up to speed at that point. But in the meantime, um, here's the manifold, five holes, half of a V10, and uh, yeah, we'll get this set up on the mill and start cutting it. So this is kind of fun. I'm starting to get to fill up my second board here of the, uh, well, second panel of the sticker board. Start off with the Make Joe one. Put that next to Kimber Zellick. Whoops. Bit of junk on my hands. And sometimes the trick is just getting the stickers off the backers. Especially for somebody like me who has no fingernails. Very little anyway. <laughs> the fingernails I do have are often smashed purple. Aaron will put you next to Steve and to Paul. That's your primary sticker. 
and your DCT sticker go right next to it. All right. Thanks again, Aaron. Appreciate the stickers. I'll pass the rest on to my buddies. It, it almost seems like at the factory, when they cast these things, they just cast them, cool them, kick the sand out, machine them, throw them on an engine, and out it goes, right? And it, from what I've read and from what I've uh, heard from people I, I trust their experience in, uh, cast iron apparently over time, you know, it takes, uh, the stress has come out of it over time or through heating and cooling cycles. So, yeah, <laughs> what does a manifold do but heat and cool, right? So anyway, um, that's where I have it set up. Uh, it's got a couple pads on the actual manifold itself that I can grab onto. I got some uh, aluminums packed in between the jaws and the manifold to protect my jaws. I got my uh, jack here uh, from uh, Phil and uh, Pierre uh, for uh, supporting this end. A couple clamps just to keep it pulled down and from popping out of the vise. And because I'm going to use a face mill, you know, in the uh, y-axis, uh, I can leave this here because I'll use the face mill on the y-axis and just avoid hitting the clamp on the way by. So what we're going to use is something I don't use very often because tips for it are very expensive. Uh, I got this a while back on um, on eBay, the this uh, facing head. I don't use it that much just because it takes seven of these little inserts and that can get pricey over time. But I'm willing to give it a try for this one because it means I can do it in one pass over each. So we'll give it a shot. Now for what it's worth, I also did use the height gauge on the ends to sort of make sure they're even uh, both um, uh, in the X and the Y to a certain extent. Again, the manifold itself is slightly twisted too. The flanges are slightly twisted in relation to each other. Not by much, just a little bit. But this will clean that all up too. So after touching off on this end here, I've, yeah, I've definitely had to raise the table a bit. Um, I just want to do everything in one, uh, well basically one table setting. So what we'll do is right now, I think I'm going to take 30 thou. I'm going to try for 30 thousandths of an inch uh, across all the faces and see how that cleans it up. Again, it wasn't huge, but it was enough that I, I'm not comfortable putting it back on without cleaning it up. That's actually doing a nice job of that. I have to use this face mill more often. Now the back side may start tapping a little bit, start nicking a little bit on the back, but That's not the end of the world. Hmm. Well, I quite like that actually. That'll that'll seal. Definitely. Next hole. I have a suspicion I have a couple of a uh, couple of the inserts that are slightly worn than the others because it seems like it's grabbing on. Uh, it, it sounds like it's grabbing on a few versus all of them. Oh well, deal with that later.
I can hear it just lightly scratching on the back side. Before I did this job, I uh, made sure that, well, basically I reset the tram on the machine. It's always been just a little bit off since I got it at home. So, I wanted to make it right. And that leaves a nice finish. I like it. This one here I'll have to be gentle with because it'll be the highest. Now I'm sure I could use a faster uh, spindle speed, but because I'm not really in a rush against the clock this afternoon, or this evening, let me take my time. Plus they're all interrupted cuts, right? So the carbide seems to be working. I tried using a fly cutter on the last manifold I did on an 8.3 Cummins, but I uh, really didn't like it. seeing crisscrossing patterns at the very back there. I'm not, no, I'm not putting my finger anywhere near it, but uh, at the back there I can see crisscrossing patterns. That makes me happy. It means that the, uh, well, at least the nod is correct. And make sure we're going to clear this clamp. Yeah, that'd be about right. one. Now if anybody's going to chatter, it'll probably be this one. happy with that. I'm not happy with that. We're going to do something different here. Well, I was not happy with the surface finish on this uh, last flange, so I didn't think it would be that much of an issue with it sticking out over here, over to if, seeing as I had it supported. I was wrong. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to take a light pass over all the holes. There's plenty of material here. It's not a big deal on the flanges. I'll probably just add another five thousandths or so. Just take a skim pass over everything just to clean up the surface finish. It's 
see if this works any better. Oh yeah, it looks better already. I was wrong. I should have had this uh, angle plate set up here. It's an angle plate on a couple one, two, three blocks to give it enough height. Yeah, that surface finish is way better. I got a little chatter on this hole too, one next to it, so hopefully it'll make it all nice. It's also a lighter pass than it was the first time around too, so lighter pass, or <laughs> also a lighter pass too. Really? Where did my grammar go? When it comes to using correct grammar, like Jeff Fox really says, I used to could. Man, that's way better. I should have done that to start with. Hmm. Of course, you know, we could just call it a roughing and a finishing pass. Make it sound like I, you know, know what I'm doing. Nice. And we're done. You know, that is actually a pretty decent surface finish. Yeah, that will work just fine for an exhaust manifold. So yeah, I just need to peel this off, clean up all the cast iron chips, and uh, take her back to work in the morning. So I was actually quite pleased at how that uh, manifold eventually came out and uh, I'm you know, glad we got it done and on the truck and out the door. Uh, <laughs> doing a manifold on the floor is a little, it, it's not impossible, it's just a little less convenient than doing it on a hoist where it's a little, you know, a little better height for ergonomics as it were. But uh, anyway, uh, overall I hope you found that project interesting. Um, for what it's worth, I'm still editing video from even this summertime when I was trying to get other stuff done. Uh, life kind of got away from us for a while there, and it's just been kind of crazy for crazy for a lot of us actually around the world. And uh, <laughs> between one thing and another, it's just some of the sometimes it's hard to get time to even edit. So that's part of the reason why I didn't put anything up for quite a while there. Uh, thank you to everybody who <laughs> sent me emails wondering guys dude are you okay um, thank you for those emails it's nice to know some you know nice to know some people are uh, wondering but otherwise I just wanted to say thank you to everybody thanks for subscribing if you haven't that's cool thanks for coming by uh, thanks for all your likes your comments the uh, emails and the such that people have sent you know I just I really appreciate it getting to know people from all over the world is at least half the fun of this so thanks again and I'll see you next time